some of you folks here ought to be feeling sorry for me. And I'll tell you why. For uh, quite a while, I was dealing with, in the conference, and I've always dealt in the conference with Bill Patrick. And then in my sectional was Basil Mulby. So good luck. And you know, we'd always feel sorry for ourselves because we weren't winning. We were winning other things, but we couldn't beat them. And then we would start looking around at there's some other people that weren't winning too. So, um, you know, I, I look at those people and I uh, have a lot of respect for them. And I respect you guys that are here that are trying to uh, better yourself as a coach. And I think we owe it to the kids because the kids are changing a little bit. The game's changing a little bit, but it's still basketball. And it's still going to take some hard work to get it done. If you have another formula, I'll listen to you. But the formula that I've had to come up with, I, you know, you think about a big pot, you put things in there and you stir it up. Well, if we had a group of kids here right now and we said, you go coach them like I did down at the uh, top 60 workout, I had some pretty good players on my team down there. But Gary Donna said, go coach them. So you have to go coach them. And that's not the easiest situation. But what my point is, is all of you would do certain things based on things that have already happened. That's why you would coach them the way you're going to coach them. I heard Coach Busick talking about having a seven-footer. Well, that might really screw you up if you have a seven-footer. You might totally blow up your whole philosophy over that seven-footer. And then when he leaves, you say, well... Shouldn't have done that. Who's done some things in coaching where they wish they wouldn't have done it? Does anybody raise their hand and say, I wish I wouldn't have done that? You know, everybody here should have some moment where that happened. Or you're staring at a kid on the bench in the sectional and you're saying, well, if I put you in, you may win the game or lose the game. Who's ever been in that situation where you've looked at that kid and said, I can't put you in? And then you lose and you think, what if I would have put him in? I think the main thing I'm going to try to do here today is challenge your thinking. I watched Coach Busick, and I could tell a couple of really tough stories on Coach Busick. We played on the same intramural team at Grace College. We were both married students. Uh, Scott Bloom had just uh, left Valparaiso, so he played intramurals there. I don't know if you remember Scott Bloom. He was pretty good. So I guarded him one game. I don't know how many Bloom had, but I had 40 on him. Now, I'm not going to tell you what Busick scored. I'm not going to tell you. I'll just leave it at that, okay? But Busick, we were on the same team, and we had a lot of fun. We graduated there at Grace together. Um, But uh, I don't have a lot of college basketball stories to tell. Uh, I wasn't really a college basketball player. But in high school, I played at North Miami, and uh, I ended up coaching there. And, you know, I found some things that worked. I found some things that didn't work. One thing you have to be careful of in coaching is your philosophy. You have to be careful. Don't let one bad experience against one or two teams blow up your philosophy. If I based my coaching on all of our games with Coach Patrick at Valley, I, I would probably be, you know, in a rubber room somewhere. Okay? You can't base everything on your bad experiences. And you can't base everything on your good experiences. But you can find some things that work and then take those and and build a team, build a program. And that's what we've tried to do. Where we coach, we're either in a dead even game or a lot of times we're up against it. Last year we played Logan Sport. We played Huntington North. And you know, we're a 2A school. So we were up against it in a lot of games. In our conference, we played against some very good teams. We played against teams from the... uh, what used to be the uh, MIC, now that conference is disbanded, but, uh, you know, we played against a lot of those schools, and a lot of those schools were 3A schools, some really good 2A schools. So when you're looking at who you're playing against, what we're going to try to show you today are some looks that maybe you can grab some of it and say, you know what, that might work with our team. I like pressure. I like to put pressure on uh, the opponent. 
I like pressure defense, and I like tempo. I've got some questions here we're going to be asking, and you can write out there your answers. Do you have kids who are capable of playing harder? You can write yes or no. Will your defensive system stop teams more than you will score? That's a different way to look at it. But is your defense, when the score's 60 all with two minutes left, are you counting on your defense or are you counting on your offense? Some of you might say both. Okay, I've found a lot of times I'm hoping some kid that's not a very good three-point shooter is going to knock one in over the years. Or I'm hoping somebody that shoots 65% from the line is going to hit a one-and-one to to give us a lead. You want to make sure your defense is, is where you want it. Does your team defense produce at least two steals per quarter? You know, you look back at your games, if somebody beat you, look how many steals you had. There have been games where we get beat by 20, and I'll look back and the team that, our team had three steals. I'm thinking we weren't aggressive enough, or they were really good fundamentally, and they took us apart. So that's a big key, I think. What can you go to when you're down 10 with four minutes left? Do you have a system installed where you can say, okay, if we're down, we're going to go to this system? And I think, too, when you look at that, there's teams down at the end of the game, they're going to spread the floor on you. What's your philosophy when somebody spreads the floor? How are you going to uh, handle that? So I think that's going to be important in this. Uh, what is your backup plan if your game plan is not working? In your defense, can you apply, apply ball pressure and always guarantee help? Is your defense as consistent on the road as it is at home? Do you notice your defense is more effective at home than it is on the road? So that's something to kind of think about. Uh, does your defensive system allow you the ability to change looks? When you extend the floor with your defense, what are your goals? Okay, let's just get an idea here. Who here, by a raised hand, likes to extend the floor? Okay, we've got people here who do, all right? Um, what's your goal when you're extending the floor? Somebody tell me quickly, what are you trying to do when you extend the floor? Anybody have any, any comments on that? What are you trying to accomplish? You want tempo. Here's what you need for tempo. You need one team that wants to break. And if that's going to happen, if we ever face a team that's wanting to break, we're like, yes. But if you're Kolkmeyer, who I faced when he was at North Judson, he would come down the first possession, and he might pass it around 15 times because he knows we want to run. He knows we want to get out and go. So he's going to come down the first possession and tick me off, and I'm yelling, Kolkmeyer, and he's just throwing it around. So we learned that if we want tempo, we have to extend the floor in the full court and get some things to happen. And the one thing that we try to do, we try to go miss or make when we're trying to extend the floor. That's something we really try to, if we're going to extend, we want to be miss or make full court. Okay, guys, let's go ahead and get started. Come on out here first. We'll introduce you quickly. Line up here on the line, and we'll tell tell who our team is here. And when, I, when I introduce you, just go on down there and get ready. This is Peyton Trexler. Uh, he's a young guard for a sophomore, and uh, he's going to bring some quickness that we haven't seen for a while. Uh, we've had some quick guards. You might remember Adam Dubuque. Uh, he's got some of Adam's game. Uh, he's got his quickness. Uh, he gets the basket a little bit like a guard we had named Mike Cook. So we're looking for Peyton to uh, kind of change our, our offense and our defense a little bit. Brandon Frazier, he is made for our defense. He literally won the Rochester game for us last year. Harmon scored a bunch of points, got a lot of accolades. We had 11 points at halftime. And then we're playing for the conference championship if we win this game. And I said, we've got to get steals. And we've got to change the tempo now. And Frazier went out there and literally took the ball from the Rochester kids. Just took it from them. 
And that was, <clears throat> that was a turning point in our season. And you'll see the way he plays defense that, uh, you would take Brandon Frazier. He's a senior for us. Uh, this guy, Alex Harmon, he's a little taller than me. Let's go reach here, Alex. Let's just see what you got on me. Okay. Uh, he's got me pretty good there. Last person I was with like that was Ruth Riley. I don't know if you remember Ruth. She played at Notre Dame and I had a Ruth in class and I'd say, Ruth, let's just show the kids how I could get to her elbow. You imagine in a girls game how dominant she was. But Alex led the state in block shots last year and Coach Perry went through those very meticulously to make sure those were real and uh, over five a game, five a game. Tremendous uh, shot blocker, great rebounder, really good at jumping and keeping his reach after two or three tips. And a really good offensive player, left-handed, Alex Harmon. Matt knows, good sophomore, uh, shot the three a lot for us last year. Over the summer, he worked hard on going to the basket. And now he's stronger, he's doing a good job on the football team. So we're excited about him uh, for this year. Another good sophomore, played uh, varsity all last year for us as a freshman. Okay, Carson Blair. Carson's the quarterback on the football team. Uh, they came back and uh, beat Whitco last night in a good win. They've won three in a row, so we're excited about that. Uh, Carson had a game last year against Madison Grant where he hit nine threes as a freshman. Hit nine threes. So um, he's a really good ball handler, very heady player. You may remember his brother, Jackson Blair. We had Jackson. He was left-handed. Uh, he played for us uh, just a few years back. And uh, the Blairs are a great family at uh, Southwood. You know, the Blairs, their dad was a great player, Todd Blair. He's still the leading scorer all time at uh, Coach Kennedy. You probably played against Todd Blair. You know, he might be a little younger than you. But uh, he's still the leading scorer there. So Carson's going after him. Hey, good job. Uh, Paul Farlow, he's a guy coming for us, played JV last year, uh, he's a good junior, he's going to be up there uh, looking for some playing time, and uh, really has improved over the last couple of years, so we're excited about him. Uh, Quentin per uh, Perry, his dad helps us, Quentin is an incoming freshman, and we're excited about uh, his future with us, Peyton Enzer, another freshman. He uh, came along with us, getting a little bit taller every year, and uh, did a good job on the eighth grade team last year. We're excited about having him with us. And Dallas Holmes, uh, very good freshman for us. Uh, he showed a lot of potential this summer, so we're excited about him. So those are our players, our coaches. This is Devin Dale. If uh, you look at Devin, now, he played uh, for me. He played uh, a lot of good defense, probably one of my better defenders I've had at Southwood. What sport would you say, just by looking at him, you guys are experts, what would you say his sport of expertise is? What's he really good at? Anybody have any idea? Swimming. No. That's a good guess. Okay. Anybody else? Tennis? Good guess. Devin Dale was a college golfer. He golfed at uh, Huntington University, and uh, he's student teaching at Bluffton. So he's going to come back and still help us. We're excited to have him back. Uh, Coach Perry, wave at him. Coach Perry is uh, my assistant coach. Jim Hogan's not here today. He's on the football staff. And just to show you how it works at Southwood, Coach Dallas Dugan is our girls coach. He's here with us today. He came to the clinic. Uh, he loves to go to clinics, but uh, we talk a lot back and forth with him about our philosophy. He runs some of our 40 defense, and uh, we're excited to have him here today. So <clears throat> we're going to run the guys through a few drills to start with, some things we do to get warmed up, uh, just to kind of, if we're in a defensive mode, which we usually are, here's the first things we'll do. I like to use the letters. So if your gym has letters, it's something you can use for agility. It's something to get the kids going. Give them three letters, do the chop. Chop through. Let's go. It's going to chop. Okay. Chop each letter. Hustle down.
This is just a little something to get their feet going, get them rolling. Okay, slide the letter. Slide it. Slide. Slide. Move your feet. Move your feet. Just slide your feet. Get ready to go. Okay, front to back. Front to back. Good. Front to back, give him three and get going. Good. Work. There you go. Move your feet. Move your feet. Keep working. Three letters. Get up the letter. Up the letter. There you go. All the way up. I like to use the full cord. It kind of gets them in the mindset. That's where we're going to be. We're not going to be on one end. We're going to be on both ends of the floor. Just get them moving a little bit. They're ready for the next line, and then they get going. <clears throat> Say, clap them in. Clap them in. Another thing we'll do occasionally, clap them in. When the line's coming in, get the hands going, guys. A little encouragement here. These guys going. Get the letters, keep working, keep working. We know their name, we'll call their name. Let's go, Holmes. Okay, avoid the letters, avoid them, go. Avoid, 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 avoid. Good, avoid letters, don't touch them, don't touch them, avoid. Quick feet, quick, quick. This is just a little workout, it's got about 20 things we can do here, but we'll pick about five of them. <clears throat> okay, now do your slide. Okay, now we're sliding. We're going to add in a little run here. Slide the middle. Now you sprint. Sprint. Okay, good. And then run out, get the next one. Good, go. They get three, go. Three letters, go. Okay, good job. Keep working. A lot of you might be looking at how high up we are. We're a little high, but we haven't been doing these. This is our first day, so kids will be lower as we get going. We'll get lower and lower, get a lot better stance, a lot better positioning. Okay, set up bull in the ring. Let's go. Get to your spots. Set bull in the ring up. Go ahead and get your uh, line here at Trexler. Coaches, get to your spots. Coach Dale, bull in the ring. Okay, now, what we do here with this drill, we go about 20 seconds. If we've played terribly, we'll go about 50 seconds. But this is a little drill. You'll notice these guys are closer. These guys are going to be one dribble. These guys are two dribbles. When they're dribbling, you want to make sure your hands are down in the dribbling area. I uh, hear coaches say, well, you never leave your feet on defense. Well, what do you teach your kids to do when they pick up the dribble? I hope you're not telling them to just stay down here like this. They're going to never get a steal. When they pick that dribble up, people better be leaving their feet a little bit. I mean, think about it. You're down here. Dribble a couple and stop. Okay, and he's down here. Now he picks it up. I get it up here. Now, if he goes, if he's 6'4", and I'm 5'9", hey, I've got great position, not leaving my feet. Whoever taught that is insane. 
When you pick your dribble up, if you're teaching your kids not to leave their feet, what do you want them to do? Do you want them to get deflections? You better hope the pass is out here. You better hope it's down. Who's going to throw? Unless you're most medley, one of those jobs. He teaches those all the time. But most coaches don't teach the bounce pass that much anymore. They teach it, but kids hate it. You know why? Because when they get it, it's hard work to get down here and throw that bounce pass. It's hard work. So what we teach, here's what I think about. I think about if you ever watch a kid that's really good at playing video games, don't watch the TV screen, watch their fingers. And you'll notice there's a pattern that develops. And if you can get that pattern down, you can almost play uh, blindfolded. So my thinking is, where is he going to throw the pass? That's what I think. So if he's here, and he's always throwing it right here or up here, or if he likes to jump pass, I better be up here. I better not be down here like, you know, in my old Chuck Taylors and my knee pads down here. You know, hey, I've got him. He picks it up. You're all over him. Make his life miserable. And if you're not making people miserable when they pick up the dribble, when are you? See, there's days these guys come in and they don't want to pressure. When you go to work, do you want to be all the time, you know, crazy? No. There's times you want to get your coffee and you want to relax a little bit. When you're a pressure team, you've got to be ready to pressure. And you've got to pressure with everything you've got. And that includes occasionally getting up here on them. Leaving your feet a little bit. Now, if the guy gets your dribble, see, that's stupid. No. But when he picks it up, pick it up, I'm all over him. He doesn't like me when practice is over. I wonder sometimes, and maybe you wonder this, and you kids up there can answer it, do kids ever make deals with each other? Hey, if you go easy on me, I'll go easy on you. Well, usually those two kids don't get to play much if they make those kind of deals. Okay, about 10 seconds, 15 seconds, let's get going. Go. Pressure, good. Three, three fakes, three fakes, good. Next one, go, go, let's go, next guy. Okay, stay with him, Peyton. Add the dribble. Add the dribble. Wait till he gets there. Wait till he gets there. Armin, stay here. One more. Okay, go, go, go. Get the next guy. Good. Good, good. Next, go, move. Cover. Okay, move, next. Get the dribble. Get down to the dribbler. Good. Good, good. Next, switch, go. Cover. Okay, switch, go, move. Okay, switch, go. Good. Okay, now, we would go back with this group, and then these would, we'd flip some people, and they would go through. Okay? So, if you're in a defensive mindset, you got to be thinking in those terms, we got to be ready to go at them. Okay, set up your line here. Dribblers, get your ball, get ready. Set your line up. Okay, now this is good for ball handlers and good for pressure. Uh, Peyton, remember we're going to stay inside about right here. We don't want to get out in here in this area too much. This is just for on the ball pressure and for these guys to kind of work together and then they would flip. They would handle the ball. Uh, if you're a ball handler, 
If you've got a point guard you're trying to develop, this is a great drill for that. Because all these guys are fresh when that guy comes at them, especially the first guy. So they're going to go through it. They're going to dribble through. They're going to keep control. Don't steal it right now. I know you wouldn't practice, but don't steal it. Harmon, get back more, a little bit more. And they'll hand off the guy to the next guy. This works into our defense. We hand off people a lot. So this is a full court, off the dribble, handoff. Go. Once they get to the third per, uh, third person, you go. Good. Get through. Okay, go. Move your feet. Good. Good. Stay down there, guys. Stay down. Go keep control. Get him, Harmon. Get him. Okay, bring it back. Let's go. First guy, Harmon, you're first. Let's go. Bring it back. Move your feet. Good. Get going. There you go. Good. Get him in the next guy. Get him. Bring it. This is a very grueling drill for the ball handler. They're seeing a live guy every time they hand off the guy. Live guy every time. Okay. All right, Coach Malby wanted me to show some full court stuff. So you can put those balls up, guys. Coach Dale, help, help out here on this. Let's get in our 2-2-1. And set up in that uh, press, press offense. Here's something I've found in coaching, and maybe you agree, disagree. The better my players are, the less I have to do as a coach as far as finagling things. If I have a really good team, I mean, when we had Stauffer and Crin. The Butte Cook, we'd put Stoffer on the block, we'd put Crin in the high post, and it was pretty much over. But sometimes when you've got guys that are pretty good, last year our problem was we had a lot of guys that were young. So we had to come up with something that would make our guys play older than they really were. So what we've came up with, we do a lot of team defense and we try to get people away from the floor. Here's my philosophy. If I've got all my guys up, you're going to have to get all your guys up. When I was at North Miami, Southwood had a player named Sergey Struck. He was this Russian kid. I swear he weighed 300 pounds. He was left-handed. But if he was under the basket, it was over. So one thing we always did with Southwood, we're going to extend the floor. We're going to get Sergey Struck up here against the press break. Now here's something a lot of coaches struggle with. I've struggled with it, and this came to me one day. Coach Mulby does this in the half court. A lot of guys talk about, let's guard him, get all over him. What's he going to do? He can't shoot. He can't dribble. If he does dribble, he's going to dribble here. He can't advance the ball unless he passes it. So what my philosophy is, we are not going to guard him. We're going to go five defenders on four. And we're going to deny like crazy to get you where you're out of position getting the ball in. So here's the deal. He's over here. Nose is going to take this guy because he's probably going to go to ball side. He'll take him because the ball's there. Now, if you run over here, if it's a live situation, and now Nose is coming over here, Frazier will pick him up. There's one guy. We got him. These two guys are switching. They're going to switch everything. And if this guy, here's my big pet peeve. I'm big, so I don't come up. 
You ever coach anybody like that? Don't, hey coach, I'm not coming up, I'm big. Well, you better be ready to come up. And Harmon will come up here if we have to. But these guys, all they have to do is match up four and four. Get them matched up. And if you get them matched up, it's going to be hard to get it in. Okay, let's try to keep them from getting it in one time. Let's go. Good. Okay. Now get in your box. Get in your box. Get in your box. Good. Okay, good. All right. Now, back down here. Okay, now, right there, when the ball got over here, Frazier went over. Nose has this, but he got up. Harmon covered him because nobody else was here yet. So that was a good play by him, but he could only come up to about right here so he don't get burnt back. Okay, now, here's another thing. Throw the ball in here to Quentin. Now, you've got him. Now, here's a mistake I think a lot of people make in trapping. Everybody thinks to trap, you have to have two on the ball. Look what we've done here. We've got him here, pin him. Don't let him get it. Just get your arm over him, the other arm, like this, Matt. Over here, like, just like that. Stay open. Now, Matt was sinking right there, denying, which is okay. But look, Peyton's in here in the gap. Harmon's got long, and now you're stepping in. So we're doing this. You're all over him, and we're taking away that look. And if you throw it here, now I'm on him. Now, trapping is not two on the ball all the time. Now we do that. Throw it here again. Now if you run it hard here and you beat him there, right there, is he not trapped? He's not advancing the ball, and we've got all of our people set. Now if we bring Frazier up, get on this side of him, and now you become a pusher, and now you're the guy here, we've got a trap, but I've wasted a guy. I'm making this guy out to be a lot better than he really is. I can contain him with one guy. Why do I want to send two? When I can, and I'm trying to make you think a little bit. Why send two when I can keep him back here and our defense is more sound that way? So go back, Frazier. Now when they swing it, you just go back to 2-2-1. You've got him. You're swinging. Now if you go that way, now Matt's coming over. He's playing position. Get back a little bit, Matt. Get back. And now, Blair, you're splitting in here. Frazier, you're coming up. If he's this right here, you're going to come up a little bit. Does everybody know what it means when you press? That is short for pressure. Full court press is short for full court pressure. So... When you're putting on pressure, and don't be afraid of this either. Go back. Take it out again. Don't be afraid if Quentin gets it, give it to him. And let's say he runs by Blair. We don't care. He's dribbling. Run him in here. Now, I'm playing here. Nose is getting over. Now you've got the backside, and we're fine. Keep one on the ball as much as you can in your press. And you'll find it to be more effective because these guys now can match up and they can play the passing lanes easier. You want to talk about a tough job, have three guys trying to guard four. Eventually, when they move it, they're going to find the guy open in the middle and now it's going to be two on one. And now we have Harmon. He blocks five a game, but we don't want him in foul trouble. So one on the ball can, help, can save you a lot of trouble. Okay, let's go full court one time here. Deny him hard. Let's go. Switch. Okay, got him. Get back, get back. Good. Good. Tip. Good cover, Peyton. Back tip. Good. Okay, okay back down here. Now, here's the other thing. And... You'll see tape of our team if you ever watch us. We'll let teams bring it up some. But very seldom against a team that you're even with 
or a team that's not as good as you, should they be allowed, in my opinion, to just walk it up? Think of all those things you're missing out on. If you've got any athletes at all, and you get it organized, think about Quentin right here. By the time he got to half court, he was pretty much spent. Think about him doing that about 75 times in a game. Think about what that's going to do to him. And then if they sub, who's the next guy? He's not even starting. So if you force him to sub, we've had guys in our games before, I hear coaches out here like I heard Coach Busick, his philosophy is if a guy's not very good, we don't guard him. Here's what we do sometimes. If a guy's not very good, we get all over him. And we make his life miserable, and then the coach is like, you can't play tonight. I can't use you tonight. Because these guys aren't going to allow you to stink tonight. Okay, they're not going to allow it. Now there will be guys where, because like Manchester, they had four shooters last year. We would have to play off a guy to get to try to get to four guys. One of my most favorite moments in coaching, I had a kid at North Miami, his name was Adam Garvin, and he was not a three-point shooter. But he made three, three in the first half, and I think one in the second half against Mulby at Cass. And I looked down at Mulby, he's like, he's not supposed to do that! You know, he had more tapes than we did. And that was one of my favorite moments with Basil. Because he was just flipping out. How is Garvin hitting threes? And then we got Kinsey to drive through your zone a couple of times. And you didn't like that. But that was just twice in about eight years. Okay. Let's go to the high-low. High-low look. Now, this is a look we use to set up the traps at half court. You've got your uh, main, main dogger in front, your second hounder here, and your third guy in the circle. So they're all in the circles. Get in the circle, he's in it, that's good. One on the ball until you get over half court. Once you get over half court, Frazier's here, why don't you guys flip sides on this? Get back to your normal sides. Now, you'll see in those diagrams that I gave you, and I hope you read those because I did put some time into that. I hope you do read them. And I did that because I wanted to make you think. That's the only reason I did I thought, I'm going to make these guys think a little bit about their philosophy. But this looks like a 1-3-1. One, one. It's really not. All it is is we split our tops, we're still in our 2-3, and these guys are the jumpers. We did this a few years ago because uh, Dick and Tone from Manchester was killing us, so we wanted to start working him up the floor, and he was pulling up in the middle. If somebody's killing you down the middle, this is a great defense. Where are they going to go? They're not going here. They're certainly not going there. And if they go here, we're going to try to trap them. That's the philosophy. So this guy works them up. If they go to him over here, throw it to him. You try to keep him over here. If he throws it back, get up the court a little bit. Now get him running. And now you're busting in here. Come over, Frazier, a little bit. Right in there. Not too far. You don't have him totally. And now we trap. And now when he's there, you're in here, Peyton, and you're back. Okay? So that's how it'll look. If somebody gets behind us, the backside guy's got to be ready because Harmon's coming over here hard on this guy. And then you're diving for the steal right here. Let's see it. High-low. This is the high-low look. Hey, good? Good. Get him, get him, man. Good. Go, go, finish. Box, get in box. Set it, get box. 75. Okay, good. Different look. Get middle. Good. Cover. Hands up. Okay, hold up. Okay. Now, Frazier, when they got to there, you should have been back. Now, Blair will take it and we go from there. 
Okay. Okay, the next look, uh, we go to our 75, and this is more passive. You guys back up a little bit. You guys back up. And now what we're trying to do is make them pass and work it up against the defense. If they dribble it, you take them, but you want them to bring it to you. You're not going to them on this. This is one where we back off a little bit. We get our hands active, but we're trying to be big. We're not trying to push up to make them dribble. Make them pass. So back off your guy. Okay, let's go. Run it. Still get the middle. Hey, good. Three, four, five. Good. Bring it. Hey, good. Hey, we got the, we got the deflection. Okay, run it again. Let's go. Stay back. Cover. Get back, bring it in. Get back. Good. Get back, nose. Good. Okay, good. All right. So it's just to get them out of what they want to do. Okay. Now, Dale, you turn around here. You're up here now. Let's bring the defense this way. Harmon under the basket. Okay, now this is a, a thing we do to, to kind of get our team going. We call this drill rebound into offense. Rebound into offense. Coach Dugan, we'll let you be the shooter over here. We'll just put him right in here. Right there. So he's the extra guy on this. What I want them to do, they're going to move the ball, and then we're going to rebound it, and we're going to push. Red, you'll be in man down there. We're pushing for a shot. Then you're going to be listening for what my call is. Okay, so white, you're going to get into what we're going to do. All right, move the ball. Red, you can rebound it. When I say shot, throw it to Perry or uh, Dugan. Shot, throw it to him. Shot, get it up. Okay, rebound it, get it. Okay, go, push it up. Push it up, get offense. Hit it. Okay, play it, play it. Hit it. Okay, box, 100, get in it. Show, right there, good, get in it. Good, go. Look, good. Good job, Alex. Okay, kill it. Okay, set up. High, low. High, low. High, low. High, low. Get ready. One on it. One on it. Okay, help. Recover. Good. Active hands. Active. Okay, kill it. Okay. Now, right there, we would change it up. Come back, guys. We would change, we would sub, but we go, we call that rebound into offense. All we're trying to do is get a possession of quick offense, get back and set up something in our defense off a call. So the key possession, there's two things. We want to get the rebound. Offensively, we're not stressing it, but we want a good shot. And then we want to be ready into what we're going to get into. When I'm on the sideline, I'm yelling defense a lot. Our kids might be bringing the ball up and I'm saying, hey, we want to do this next time. So we'll be in our offense. That's when we make our adjustments, when we're on offense. We'll talk about it a lot. Point guard, I might tell them, hey, get him into our uh, 40 ball right now. Get him into 40 flat ball. Okay, that's rebounded to offense. Another thing we do is called five trips. Five trips is a game where a steal is worth two, a stop is worth two, a score is the point value, and we play that way. If you don't get a, if it goes out of bounds, it's two points for the other team. We're not going to keep score, but we would make five trips. We'd make five trips up and down the floor. You guys are in man. You guys are in, uh, let's go 40 ball right now. One guy up. Okay, let's go. Dugan's out of there now. Okay, go. Good. Pressure. Ball pressure. Get him. High post. Cover. Pressure. Good. 
There you go. Run out. Run out. Hey, good. Hey, box. Box. Good. Get, get back, Alex. Hey, this is the third trip. That's the fourth trip. Here's five. 100 men. Match up. Just match up. Match up. Match up. Run him. Run him. Okay, kill it. Okay. So right there, we did a few different things in just a few possessions. And these guys are, you know, trying to get back into it. Okay, let's show our uh, stuff we do in the half court. Let's say we have a team that's doing this. Quentin, you come out here. And uh, Holmes, you come out here. Dale, you're here. Farlow, go down. Enzer, you go down. Okay, we'll have teams that like to hold it or like to uh, draw and kick. So we've got to make some things happen out of our zone. One thing we can do if a delay is happening like this, we'll have one of these guys take the ball. So Blair, you take the ball. Now what you do here, you work the numbers. This is as old as it gets, four corners. And you have to ask yourself, what is your philosophy? What are you going to do to get the ball back? Because when I have people critical of me, I say, okay, what's your idea? What are you going to do? Let's hear your, your stuff. You know, I love that. I heard uh, Coach Dunleavy over at Purdue years ago. He was talking about how to guard the screen and roll. He gave seven ways to guard it. And some guys are up there like, that won't work. And he goes, well, what do you want to do? I thought that was a great point. That day I got this from Larry Brown. Larry Brown said, there's a time, throw it here. There's a time, dribble, to slide your feet, throw it down there. And then there's a time to run. Don't be sliding your feet around. You look like a dork. Here's a guy going by you. Go by me. Oh, I'm sliding my feet. I'm fundamental. While he's going to draw Harmon's third foul. Run, get in front of him, and do something else. You know, there's a time for running in the half court. It's like this. If this guy's going by me that way, I'm sliding. Go by me. I've got to run and get in front of him. Now I can slide. But so much where we hear, you got to slide your feet. you got to slide your feet. Well, there's times you got to run. If you want to put pressure on, you've got to run. Okay, they're trying to hold it. The keys are this. Ball goes over there. This guy's got to cheat up hard. These two guys are splitting here. And if he gets it, you want to pinch him hard. Does everybody know why he's down there and he's down there? There's a couple reasons. One, they probably don't want them to have the ball in the delay situation. And they're probably not the best ball handlers on the team. So here's what we try to do. If they throw it here, jumping over, in, right in here, Harmon, you've got there. And now we take something away from him. So he's got to make that pass out there. Throw it out. Now, Blair, you recover to him. He's still cheating. Throw it to that side. Now he's getting over. You go over there. And now you're cheating up in here a little bit. Ready for that pass. Okay? When it's working right, if these guys are being real patient, we'll have both these guys up cheating and trapping. And Harmon's basically guarding two guys down here. If you've got a, uh, think about this. If you've got an eight point lead with three minutes left and this guy shoots a three, if he's not coming out of the game, I don't know who is, unless he's a great shooter. You're trying to move the ball, waste some time off the clock, and this guy jacks a three and misses it, by the way. I'm ready to see him yanked. But see, that's the point. When the game, I'll tell my guys, hey, they're not going to shoot any more threes. Don't worry about the three anymore. And we've won a few games doing this. Here's another thing about defense. 
you'll see some of our scores, and sometimes it'll be Huntington North 70, Southwood 40. And you're like, man, Southwood, they got blown out. Well, here's what happened. That game was about 50 to 35, and we could have been patient, held the ball, kept it to 15, and I'm like, heck no, we're going after them. We're not going to just sit here and say, hey, we got beat 15 by Huntington North. No, we're going to go after them, and here's why. Because one night we did that against Bluffton down 15 in the fourth quarter with four minutes, and we won. Northfield down 15 in the fourth quarter, and we won. It's not going to work every time putting pressure on. But I guarantee you, if you don't put pressure on, you're going to lose if you're down that much. Too much time's wasted. You waste too much time. And I'm talking about being down enough where you know what I'm talking about. Where the game is, we either press or we're going to lose. So what we do when somebody delays, we'll do this or we'll switch it. We'll switch people. If they start to dribble, throw it here. Now replace him. Just go under and replace him. If he brings it middle, Peyton, you take him. And jump him right there and then you jump. So when they're coming this way, we jump that side of the floor. Jump that side. Then if they go back here, now we start it all over again. Now Frazier can come up. Harmon splits. Okay. Now, let's go to our regular 40 ball. How much time do I have, Coach? Five. Okay. I've tried to get a lot of stuff in here. I hope you've got something out of it. In our 40 ball, we try to make a lot of adjustments. Here's some things we try to do. One, if they don't have a point guard that's going to hurt us scoring, we'll bring this guy in. Come on in. And we call this 40 flat ball. And what that means, we're only going to guard right out to where Perry is, right there. Now, if he gets it, get all over him. All we've done is we've shrunk the pressure. Now, here's a, something you can try with your team. Try to work on pressure for about a week and then do the same thing out of your half court. Your runs are so much shorter that you'll be shocked what your kids will be able to get to. We did this before we played Madison Grant this year. I was mad. We ran all week full court pressure. And then when they came in, we had one on the ball everywhere, and we beat them by about 30. It was because these guys played great half-court defense. When you press, you can't be like, well, we're going to press and hope they miss a three or miss a layup. Or they're going to get a layup and we're going to go down and make a three. That does not work very often unless you have great shooters and your kids can run all day. You've got to have something like, this is what I think. You defend, you break, and you get into your defense. And you take pride in your defense. You don't run it and say, well, if they score, it's okay. It's never okay when they score. It's never okay when they get a layup. There'll be times you watch our team and we give up layups. You're like, man, that defense is terrible. We're ticked. We're not happy when they get layups. But we're going to get better and we're going to make adjustments. So here's some adjustments you can make in the 2 3. First one is this guy right here is the key to any 2 3 defense. Not just Alex Harmon. The guy in the middle is the key, and I'll tell you why. Watch this. Go guard the ball. If we put Harmon on him right here, now these guys can cheat out. He cheats. He cheats. You come back in here, Enzer. And now all you've got to do is find one guy down here. But look what that does for your tops. Just by your middleman guarding him, look what your tops can do. Now, we did this to a couple of teams. Drop Harmon down under the basket. Now, you guys have to cover, but look what it does for these guys. Is anybody having a light come on here? If you drop him down, now look at your wings. They can just fly around. Because he's down, 
and you're out. Oh, we'll have teams that will have an occasional guy that can shoot in the corner, a really good three-point shooter. But we've got Frazier over here. Here's what Frazier can do. Just get up here, Frazier, right there. Throw it to him. Now, Frazier, get in, Harmon. Get that corner. Go. Throw it. There you Throw it over there. Get him back. Give it back to him. Throw it. See, he's going to cover that easy. Get back. Now, he's just showing up here. Throw it back. Get there. See, this guy has got to stay below. Throw it here. He's got to stay below right here. And when he throws it, you got to be moving and you got to be scrambling to get here. You're not going to get here like we talk about being cool. Here's the cool guy. Throw it here. Now he throws it. Oh, hey man, I'm, I'm being up here. No, you're not. You're not guarding anybody. You're only out here because you can shoot a little bit. See, that's what you get to. You start asking yourself, why do you play people? Well, some, some of them aren't because of defense, I'll tell you. You know, there's stuff all the time on the internet about great players. Do you ever hear anybody talking about great defenders? People used to talk about Michael Cooper. He's one great defender. Somebody give me another name of a great defender. Who is it? I want to know. Stephen Curry. Does anybody ever talk about his defense? Anybody? Have you ever seen a YouTube video of his defense? I haven't. I've looked for it. YouTube video of Stephen Curry on defense. you got to be kidding me. He doesn't play defense. Now, who would have won the finals this year if they'd have flipped Curry and LeBron James? I wonder. I wonder who would have won that if you flip them. It's interesting, isn't it? See, guys, defense is about effort. It's about execution, and it's about guys working together. And that's what we try to do. If you're out here, let's say you can't get there, ball goes there, Harmon is going to show, you're going to get here, and Peyton, you're going to dive in here by then. If, throw the ball back to the top, if the ball moves against your zone, throw it. If it moves and you don't move, you are out of position. That's a good one to write down. If the ball moves and you don't move, I guarantee you, you're out of position. I wrote in there a bunch of things you can do uh, with the defense. Uh, we've got a lot of things we do. I talked about the things that we learned in coaching. Uh, one thing I've learned is opposites. Let's say you're playing man and you're down 15 and you're playing a slow tempo. Think in opposites. Speed up the tempo and go to a full court zone defense. And something's going to change. Um, I've also learned that there's a lot of things that we can't control. But we try to control what we can. Um, here's another thing. I'm Coach, I'm about done. Coach every game to the end. One pet peeve I have is when a coach, their ego gets so big, they can't coach because they're down 20 and they had to take their starters out. What about those kids that are waiting on the end of the bench trying to be varsity players? Coach them until that buzzer sounds. Because they want to play too. Put your ego aside and build your program. Because some nights it's just not going to work. Um, I don't focus on officials much. Especially when I'm playing guys like Coach Patrick. I leave that to them. Coach Patrick, he'll take care of the officials. He'll get them wound up and, you know, that'll be fun for us. Uh, you know, Coach Patrick, I, I don't know how he does it, but he whispers something to him that just, just manifests some things that you just can't imagine sometimes. It's really interesting. Um, I feel like during the game, I need to stay on my team. I need to stay with them. Keep working with them. There's things we need to learn. I need them to know what I want. Here's another thing. Find a style of play that's, that fits your style of coaching. Some coaches are real rah, 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 and they set all these goals. We're going to get 20 rebounds a game, and then they sit in a 2-3 zone. Like, we're going to get 20 offensive rebounds a game. Well, how are you going to get it? You're not going up and down the floor. Set your goals to meet your coaching style. You know, try to do that. I think that's helpful. 
I've got loyal staff. That's huge. Get some guys around you that are loyal. You don't need many because you've got plenty of enemies out there. Everybody's an expert on the game. Find some guys that believe in what you're doing. And if you're an assistant coach, support that head coach. Give them that support. Also, learn how to lose with class. Go through the line and congratulate those kids and those coaches. They deserve it. They beat you. If you don't go through and congratulate them, what good's your team? If you can't go through and be like, hey, you did great, you should be excited because at least they beat a good team. If you're like, whatever, then you're whatever. You need to lose with class. Um, awards programs, I talk about every kid. I never go through and just flip to it. I talk about every player. If you can't find something positive about your players, they shouldn't be on your team. And then the last thing, don't forget your family. Um, we're an empty nest now. I've got a grandson. My kids are all older now. My son, he's a head coach. My daughter just got out of college. My other daughter lives at Whitestown. Um, my wife, she comes with me to a lot of the games. We eat out after the games. There's some things that can wait. With all the technology we have now, leave some time for your family. I'll use baseball on this quickly. I was up at Manitou the other day, and I was up there on a boat chilling with my uh, father-in-law, and who goes by, no shirt on, on a jet ski with their grandson or granddaughter, Basil Malby, up there on his Sunday, not in watching football, and out there with his grand, one of his grandkids, having a ball on the jet ski. Guys, basketball's a great game, I love it, and I know you do too, but family, that is what it's all about. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.